Good afternoon and welcome back to the Silverstone International Circuit here on BARC TV. Our first meeting of the 2021 season. We've already seen one cracking race from the classic touring car racing club, the Pultec Pre-66 touring cars. A great fight between the Lotus Cortinas and the big American V8s at the front of the field while the smaller cars did battle further back in the pack. Second race of the day coming up, the Shell Oils Pre-83 Touring Cars and the Jaguar Enthusiast Club Saloon and GT Championship. They'll be on the grid shortly. First of all, a couple of interviews from earlier on in the day. Oh, we're here with Daniel Stewart running the Jaguar Enthusiast Club and it's, it's a beautiful car you've got with you, Daniel, today. Uh, tell us a little bit more about it, first of all. Um, well, it's the, second, it's the second car. We're the first one I killed at um, Brands Hatch. So we uh, bought a new shell and put all the opponents of the old car into this one. And... Um, decided to go for the Hess with colours, colours on it. I think it's nice. Now that sounds like a little bit of a story to me. How, did, how on earth did that happen? <laughs> I drove into the pit wall at 70 miles an hour. It doesn't normally do a car very good. No, that'll, that'll do it for sure. Yeah. How, how's today gone? Slightly better for you? Uh, the, yeah, I haven't crashed today, which is, which is good. I haven't finished qualifying though. We've got a problem with the car overheating, but um, hopefully we'll solve that. Yeah, speaking of overheating, it, it couldn't be a better day for it, yes, could it? Oh, it's, it's, for, for the first day of the season to be back at Silverstone, this is this is what dreams are made of, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. I've never raced here before, but it's a yeah, beautiful day. Yeah, the track's lovely. Yeah, it's very nice. Does it race exactly how you'd expect it to race from all the times you've watched it on the telly? Um, it's a lot slower in this car than in F1. I don't know why I'm not going around some of the bends quite the speed that I've seen on TV. But maybe I'll solve, solve that in the race. And what's it like to drive one of these things? Because we've seen plenty of them out there on the grid today already, and we're all with the, within the race. What, what are these? What are these old Jags like to drive? Because they look amazing. What, what are they actually? Have you sailed a boat? I very much have sailed a boat. <laughs> it's <laughs> probably that similar. <laughs> um, they're a handful, but then they're they're just so much fun. Uh, and and to try and master when it goes well, it's really it's really satisfying. Drive right to go left, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit like that. <laughs> Well, best of luck for the rest of the day, and we hope you get your car Thank fixed. you. Have a good day. You too. Well, you join us here in the paddock with Mark Cholleton. He's got a lovely Pinto here, Mark. Uh, First of all, I just want to ask you, is uh, is what's it like to be back at Silverstone? Fantastic. A beautiful day. First fantastic. day of the season. Yeah. It's been a while. Can't get wait to get can't wait to get going. Should I say? Fantastic. Yeah, it's good to be back. What's it like being out on the track already? Good. Yeah, very good. Um, car's got some grip. Track feels good. I don't mind this track. It's a, it's a power circuit, so we have a good bash. <laughs> Flat down. And, uh, and tell me a little bit about the car itself, because as we all know, cars like this always have a story. What, there's a, there's a long story. I started racing in 2000 uh, with a with a RS2000. Um, we, we, we crashed that a couple of times, so we reshelled that. This is the reshell, and I came back racing in 2017. Um, so, like I say, fresh car. So. Good. And I'm just taking a look inside. It is, you, you talk about using the word shell. That is, and there's not anything else in there no, about music. I think you'll find most race cars are just shells. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's lovely and spacious in there. What's yeah. it actually like to drive out on the track? Fantastic. You just throw it into a corner, steer it on the rear end, and sideways out of the corner. Keep your foot down. And we always know with uh, with classic touring cars, it, it's such a it's such a friendly competition, but it yeah. is a it is a very healthy competition yeah. as well. Yeah. It, it, talk to us a little bit about the the tour itself, because everyone seems to love racing on it. On what? Sorry, the, the championship. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, the championship's fantastic. The club's fantastic. You know, all the guys, every everybody in the club is your mate. You know, they're all friends. We help each other out in the paddock. When you get out on track, you want to beat them. <laughs> so and, <laughs> and that's what it should be all about. Exactly. Best of luck today, Mark. Exactly. Thank you very much. Getting ready then for our pre-83 Shell Oils Touring Cars and the Jaguar Enthusiast Club Saloon and GT race. The Jaguars start from the front half of the grid and in pole position it is number four of Tom Robinson alongside number one, the reigning champion James Ram. Second row, number seven, Tom Lenthal and number 11, Michael Holt. And on row three, Michael Seaborn with the Jaguar XJ40 alongside 27, Charles Coppock. Lawrence Coppock, Coppock Senior, starts on row four alongside Rick Walker, number 54. On the fifth row, Derek Pierce with the XK8 alongside number 28, the man we just heard from, Daniel Stewart. Sixth row, number 50, Matthew Davis, and number five, Simon Dunford. On the seventh row, 92, Michael Atkinson, and 45, David Ringham, and number 65, Simon Lewis, on the eighth row of the grid. That concludes the first half of the grid, which is the Jaguars, and then we've got the pre-83 touring cars sponsored by Shell Oils. 
Front row for them, Simon Jeffs in the VW Golf alongside Stephen Primet in his Mark I Escort. Second row, reigning champion Mike Luck with his BMW alongside 41, the uh, Fiesta of Tom Burgess. Then we've got Jonathan Corker in the little Datsun alongside 42, Duncan Leftley with his Golf. On the next row of the grid, we've got David Howard's Jaguar and Mark Chollerton's Escort. The 14th row of the grid, Mark Lucock, Mark I Escort, Mark Osborne, Triumph Dolomites. Stuart Kay with his Ford Capri is next alongside uh, 296 Johnny Horsfield with his Alfa Romeo. Then we've got the uh, number 28 car, which is Al Wayman, alongside number 6 Anton Martin, Camaro and Escort. 86 Colin Claxton is next with his Triumph Dolomite. And number 45 David Ringham. And number 45 uh, Mark Bevington, I should say, with the Toyota Celica. Then Bradley Bosday is next with his Ford Escort alongside Ray Kirschberg in the MG Metro. Last couple of cars on the grid, 64 Keith Evans with his Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud, alongside Phil Waller with his Hillman Avenger, and at the back of the grid, number 80, Gary Fletcher with his Vauxhall Firenze. Didn't make it out earlier on in the pre-66s with his Ford Anglia, so uh, hoping for better luck here. Great variety of cars in the pre-83 touring cars. About to get underway here with the Jaguars. After this, we will have the first of two, hour, two one-hour races today for the Brick Car Endurance Championship. Then we've got the uh, Dunlop Mini Miglia Challenge, a 20-minute race for them. Second race of the day for the pre-66 Classic Touring Cars. If you missed them uh, before the lunch break, you missed an absolute treat. Some great sideways racing coming up later from them. The Dunlop Mini 7 Challenge over 20 minutes is next up after that. Then we've got the second race for the cars we're about to see, the uh, Jaguars and the pre-83 Touring Cars. And then the Brick Cars have their second one-hour race of the day with pit stop penalties for the top three in each class to make things a little bit more interesting. I'm getting ready to get underway then. The big Jaguars off the front of the grid. Four classes in the Jaguar Enthusiast Club uh, Saloon and GT Championship, mainly Jaguar XJSs we've got out there, along with uh, a couple of XJ6s, one XJ40, one XK8 as well. It's an XJR saloon that's on pole, number four, Tom Robinson, starting alongside the reigning overall champion, number one, James Ram, with his XJS. They're both in Class D of the Jaguars, which is for the fully race-modified cars. Class A is for road standard cars, and classes B and C are for more modified cars in between. In the touring cars, meanwhile, the bigger engine cars are in class A. There's two of those, David Howard with his Jaguar XJ12, and Al Wayman with his Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Class B is Ford Capris. I think we've only got one runner in class B, unfortunately, which is Stuart K with his Ford Capri, the triplex livery car. Big field in Class C. We've got Volkswagen Golfs, Ford Escorts, Triumph Dolomites, a BMW, a Vauxhall Firenze, an Alfa Romeo, and the little Datsun 510 of Jonathan Corker. Class D, we've got Ford Escort, Ford Fiesta, Toyota Celica, Hillman Avenger, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Sud, quite a variety there as well. And one Class E runner, which is the MG Metro of Ray Kirschberg. Start line marshals in position then. Our thanks again to all the volunteer marshals around the UK. We could not have motor racing without them. If you're interested in becoming a marshal, volunteering your services, just look online for the British Motorsport Marshals Club or look on the BARC website as well. That's barc.net. Info on how to become a marshal on the UK circuits. Anyway, the cars to leave the assembly area then to head to the grid. Last year's pre-83 champion was Mike Luck in the number 78 BMW. Had a good fight with Stephen Primet in uh, his class. 
doing Class C, but Primet unfortunately had an accident at the final uh, meeting of the year uh, at Silverstone, which cost him another championship. They'll be uh, two of the main names to watch here, along with Mark Osborne, the Welshman, in his Triumph Dolomite Sprint, back after a year out of racing in 2020. Stuart Kay was uh, beaten to the Class B title last year by Nick Strong, the Worcestershire driver in his Capri. But Nick not here this weekend. David Howard, the reigning Class A champion with the Jaguar XJ12, beats uh, Al Wayman by just a couple of points to the Class A title last year. Mark Lucock is also a contender. We've got Mike Luck and Mark Lucock. That's a bit of a commentator's nightmare. Jonathan Corker with a beautiful little Datsun 510. Mark Chollerton, the man from Norfolk in his Mark II Escort RS2000. Simon Jeffs, though, in the Golf has qualified fastest of the touring cars. Ex-Alfa Romeo racer, now in the uh, Akai Hi-Fi liveried Golf, the uh, Richard Lloyd look-alike car. Half years gone by in the British Saloon Car Championship. Look out also for Phil Waller in his Hillman Avenger as the uh, safety car leads the cars up to the grid. The big cats coming out first. Tom Robinson in the XJR, the white and dark green car on pole position, alongside the Motol liveried XJS of James Ram. Then we've got number seven, the grey XJS there, Tom Lenthal. Michael Holt in his XJ6, running in class C. Walker there, the green XJS, number 54. Simon Dunford, number 5, in a virtually road-going XJS. We've got in-car footage for this race. We are on board with Stuart Kay in his Ford Capri, just making his way out of the paddock onto the grid. The triplex Capri riding on board with the chairman of the classic touring car racing club. Loves his classic Fords. He's raced that car at uh, Goodwood on occasions in the Jerry Marshall Trophy, sharing with none other, none other than uh, ex Le Mans winner and Formula One driver Jochen Maas on occasions. So settle in, ladies and gents, for an incredible afternoon of motor racing here at the home of British Motorsport, the Silverstone Circuit. Mr. K just warming the car up there on his way to the grid. Chasing uh, Mark Osborne, who's qualified just ahead of him there, the man from Bilth Wells in Wales. Stewart is mid-grid for the uh, classic touring car section of this race, the Shell Oils Pre-83, he's qualified ninth in their group. Jaguars will start from the front, the touring cars behind. Jaguars already in position on the grid then. Tom Robinson in pole position. Number one, James Ram alongside him in the Motel liveried car. Reminiscent of the Jaguars used to run in the European Touring Car Championship in the 80s. Tom Lenthal and Michael Holt behind them. We've got the Castrol liveried car of Michael Seaborn, the big XJ40 saloon. Then we've got the Copox, 27 Copox Jr. That's Charles Copox alongside Michael Seaborn. Then Lawrence Copox in the 97. Another Castrol liveried car there at the back. That is Gary Fletcher's Vauxhall Firenze. Shades of Jerry Marshall, arguably the greatest saloon car racer of all time. Twenty-three Bradley Bosday there we saw with the uh, Mark II Escort. Stuart Kay making final adjustments as he makes his way up to the grid. There's Mark Osborne, Mark Lucox Escort as well, the blue car on the left ahead of them. Marshall separating them into line. Taking their time to form up this big grid. I think we've got 36 cars out there. A couple of withdrawals in the Jags. 
I think we also lost David Margulies with his Alfa Romeo GTV during qualifying. He's not there. Big Al Wayman at the back in the big uh, Chevy Camaro, the yellow car. Colin Claxton with the red Triumph Dolomite. See the heat haze there. You can see how warm it is here at Silverstone. Number 15, number 45 rather, Mark Bevington in the beautiful Toyota Celica moves into line at the back. There's Bradley Bosdett with the escorts, Ray Kirschberg in the Metro. Patrick Watts has appeared in that car in historic racing as well. The Alpha Sud of uh, Keith Evans. Michael Holt's got the door open just to keep cool on his uh, number 11 Jaguar. Hillman Avenger at the back of the grid. Looks like we're going to get the all clear from the marshals then. Almost ready for 15 minutes of racing from Jaguars and classic touring cars. And away they go. Down towards the first corner. Good start by James Ram. A very poor start by Tom Robinson. He's been swallowed by the pack. The touring cars will then follow in a few seconds time. The flag drops and the 383 touring cars are underway in the second pack. One of the Jags hasn't got away. Let's hope uh, he's not going to be collected by any of the touring cars. They'll, the uh, yellow flag's being shown to warn the drivers. Al Wayman was very close there. Stuart Kay as well. Stuart Kay's on the grass, so is Colin Claxton. Oh, dear. A stalled Jaguar causing chaos there. Kay's uh, been hit there. That's contact with uh, Claxton, I think. And I think Stuart Kay is out of the race already. He's got a, yeah, he's got a flat tyre. And the curse of the onboard camera has hit already, unfortunately. Stuart Kay didn't even get as far as Abby on the first lap. What a disaster for the club chairman. Well, the rest of the pack heading round on their opening lap. There's Jonathan Corker with the uh, little Datsun running wide. They charge their way through Beckett's corner for the first time on towards the hangar straight. The Jaguars already away out in front. Oh, we've got a fire on uh, the Jaguar that has stalled. Who's that? That's Matthew Davis, number 50, is the car that had stalled the Jaguar XKR, that car on fire. And uh, I suspect, yes, the red flag has come out, the race has been stopped. So Matthew Davis is XJR on fire, the race has been stopped in the interests of safety. That's the car that uh, didn't get away off the grid, and it is clear to see why that car is well alight. In come the uh, marshals to fight the fire. Well, oh, goodness me, high drama here on the Silverstone starting grid. Matthew Davis' is Jaguar XJR goes up in flames. Thankfully, the driver is out. We saw he is OK. And the marshals do their job very rapidly indeed. OK, the rest of the cars being stopped on the grid. There is the Swallows racing Jaguar XJR. Well, that's the car that didn't get away from the starting grid and then there was contact as the touring car starting from the second grid tried to avoid it. Stuart Kay and Colin Claxton were involved. We saw them with damage. There must be fluid leaking out of that Jaguar. We can see there they're still uh, fighting the fire there. Well, the... Uh, Marshall's uh, earning their keep and certainly showing uh, off their repertoire here. So we are under the red flag here at Silverstone. It looks like the fire is out. We'll uh, see. And then the car just uh, caught a light. It must have been leaking, uh, f I would guess, leaking fuel. That's the end of Matthew Davis's day. They're still damping down the fire. Man from uh, Shipston on Stour in the South Midlands. See again uh, what happened here. He was trying to pull the car off the grid. It refused to fire up off the starting grid and then as he pulled it over Matthew Davis to the side of the road up it went 
Presumably uh, fuel or oil getting onto the uh, hot exhaust there underneath the car and Matthew thankfully straight out and unharmed. Silverstone recovery team in operation, the Land Rover. They're still uh, damping this car down. Well, the marshal's just making absolutely certain that this uh, Jaguar is completely out. They're reluctant to open the bonnet in case it uh, reignites, I think, when the air gets to the engine. The bonnet now comes off, and I think... Um, yes, I think the fire is out, but that was uh, a potentially nasty incident averted there by our excellent marshalling team here at Silverstone. The fire was out within a few seconds, so well done to them. Let's have a look at the start. There's Matthew Davis's Jag. Didn't get away off the line. And then as the touring cars bore down on him, they scattered to try and avoid him. But Stuart Kay, the damage was on the right of the Capri. He, he must have hit somebody else and then bounced back into Colin Plaxton in the triumph there. You can see the damage on the right-hand side of Stuart's Capri. So he must have hit somebody on the other side of the grid. We'll have to see if there's any other cars with damage. Not the start that we had hoped for in our pre-83 touring car and uh, Jaguar Saloon and GT combined race. As the Silverstone Land Rover tows away the uh, smouldering Jaguar. The Marshalls certainly earning their keep here this afternoon at Silverstone. Well, still under the red flag at the moment as soon as uh, the circuit is clear, the cars will be back on the grid, ready for a restart. Same grid lineup as before. As the Swallows Racing Jaguar XJR is towed away. You are just uh, joining us here at Silverstone. We are currently under a red flag in our first race after the lunch break on BARC TV. The Jaguar Saloons and GTs plus the pre-83 Shell Oils touring cars. After Matthew Davis's uh, Jaguar failed to get away off the grid and uh, subsequently caught fire. Thankfully no injuries. And now the uh, grid has to be formed up again and the Jaguars having to weave their way through the touring cars that had already been stopped. Back onto the grid, and Tom Robinson has struck lucky in number four. He made a terrible start. Yeah, I don't have any gain on the camera. The uh, first attempt was swamped by down. the pack, and it was James Ram from alongside him who took the lead. But with the race being restarted, he's got another chance. Tom Lenthal on the second row, number seven. 
Hands of Jaguar Specialist Garage. Michael Holt alongside him, number 11. And we've got Michael Seaborn, number 24, the Cop Ox. Charles and Lawrence this year. Richard has raced that 27 car for the Cop Ox family in uh, years gone by, the Oxfordshire family. Then it's the green car of Rick Walker, number 54. Derek Pierce in the newer XK8. Now he's raced Jaguars for many, many years, including a classic Mark II for a lot of those years. Alongside him will be Dan Stewart, number 28. Heard from him earlier. There'll be a gap where Matthew Davies would have been. Alongside there should be Simon Dunford, number 5, with his XJS. to reassure everyone no injury as a result of that uh, incident at the uh, first start of this race oh, it's Kopak just being uh, directed into position by the marshals there just change the micro cable if you can John O because we used to have that problem with some live using we use certain types of HDMI's Simon Dunford now alone on the uh, sixth row, no Matthew Davis, his car rather burnt to a crisp. Next onto the grid, Michael Atkinson in number 92 by the look of it. Looks like he's in uh, Simon Lewis's old car. He's in his older XJ6, the Series 1 there, the yellow and blue car at the back behind uh, David Ringham's grey XJS. There'll be a couple of gaps in the touring cars as well. We saw Stuart Kay pick up some damage and uh, Colin Claxton's Triumph Dolomite as well. Which means, of course, that sadly we've lost our onboard camera. Thank you again to uh, all of you watching on on Facebook and YouTube. We've got over 2,000 viewers on um, YouTube at the moment. Great to see. Do give us a like, leave a comment. Subscribe to the British Automobile Racing Club channel. Lots more live racing on BARC TV to come over the course of the season. Those of you are asking about Brick Car, that's the next race after this one. Hillman Avenger there at the uh, back of the field. That's uh, similar to the car that was British Saloon Car Champion in the early 70s. That's uh, 
car driven by Bernard Unit. This one driven here by Phil Waller, who I believe uh, used to race in a uh, Peugeot 206 a few years ago in the old pre-05 touring car category. One YouTube commenter says, uh, yes, likes. Let's get to 1,000 likes. We're on 771 as I speak at the moment. So let's get to 1,000 likes. Come on. Marshall's at the moment just trying to get the uh, cars back into the correct grid order. I think the confusion is, is because we've lost a couple of cars in that uh, start line incident. Let's have another look at the grid then, starting with the Jaguars from the front. Tom Robinson and James Ram on the front row. Second row, Tom Lenthal and Michael Holt. Then we've got Michael Seaboard in the Castrol car and Charles Coppock. Lawrence Coppock on row four alongside Rick Walker. Fifth row, Derek Pearce and Daniel Stewart. Sixth row, Simon Dunford will be on his own. Matthew Davis, uh, a non-starter after his car caught fire. Seventh row, Michael Atkinson and David Ringham. And Simon Lewis in the Series 1 XJ6 will start from the back. Onto the pre-83 touring car, sponsored by Shell Oils. Simon Jeffs in his Golf and Stephen Primmett on their front row. Second row, Mike Luck, the reigning champion, and Tom Burgess. Jonathan Corker in the Datsun alongside Duncan Lefley. On the next row, David Howard and Mark Cholerton. Then we've got Mark Lucock and Mark Osborne. Escort and Triumph. Stuart Kay won't be there, I don't think, in the Capri. Johnny Horsfield, Will in the Alfa Romeo. Number 28, that's Al Wayman with the Camaro alongside Anton Martin in the Escort. We've got a couple of number clashes between the touring cars and the Jags here, unfortunately. Colin Claxton, I don't think he's going to be there with his Triumph Dolomites. Number 45, that is Mark Bevington with the Toyota Celica. Bradley Bosdett with his Mark II Escort and Ray Kirschberg in the MG Metro are both there. The cars are just moving off, I can tell you, for an extra green flag lap behind the pace car. So an extra green flag lap as the circuit conditions may have changed slightly. You can see the marshals have put uh, some dust down on uh, the fluid from the incident there. And I can tell you we've already got to uh, a thousand likes on YouTube. That was quick. Well done, everyone. Right, it's the race to be restarted. And due to the due to the red flag, it will be over 10 minutes, not 15. 10 minutes. Robinson and James Ram at the uh, front of the grid. Good to see Tom Lenthal up there, been with this championship for a number of years in the number seven. One car that we haven't got with us uh, is a regular race winner, Colin Philpott. He was on the entry list in his Powerbell Services XJS, but uh, sadly not here. 92 Michael Atkinson, Simon Lewis's old car and there's Simon at the back in his uh, other Jaguar. Here are the touring cars, Simon Jeffs in the Akai Golf on pole position. Stephen Primmett, former multiple champion in the Mark 1 Escort. He should start as the favourite along with the BMW of Mike Luck. They bring the cars out of Stowe Corner and towards Vale and Club and then onto the group. Marshall's in position to receive the uh, cars on the grid. Pace sky with the draw. Standing start. Jags go first, and then a few seconds later, with the drop of the Union flag, the pre-83 Shell Oils touring cars.
Those marshals are braver than me standing in front of the entire grid like that with their flags. Wonderful variety on this grid among the touring cars, but it's the roar of the big cats that we're battling for top honours overall. Or will we see them start to mix as the race goes on? We shall see. Reduced distance here, as we say, 10 minutes due to the red flag. Good shot there of the uh, big cats ready to leave their lair. Looks like everybody is almost in position. Gary Fletcher moving into line in the back. The green flag is waved from the marshals at the back of the grid. We await the red lights to come on. Red lights are on and off they go. The race gets underway for the second time. Now, has Tom Robinson made a better start from pole position this time? No, he hasn't because James Ram has got ahead of him once again. Tom Lenthal trying to get through on the inside. Now the union flag drops and the touring cars get underway their cavalry charge from the back the Jaguars heading around towards the complex and away go the touring cars who's going to get their lead to the first corner is Mike Luck with a super start in the BMW the uh, golf of Simon Jeffs didn't make the uh, best of getaways there so two races in one we have to focus on here Ram leads the Jaguars ahead of Robinson Linthal Holt then it's uh, the first of the Coppox that's Charles Coppock Couple of cars running wide there as they head on to the hangar straight. Derek Pierce puts a wheel onto the grass in the XK8. But it's the reigning cha champion in the Jaguar Saloon and GT Series. James Ram under pressure from Tom Robinson. He's going to go for the inside. That's an audacious move into Stowe Corner. Just bobs back in behind the number one car there. And it's the XJS who holds the lead. Robinson sideways as they exit Stowe up towards Vale. Side by side, Charles Coppock and Michael Holt a little further back. Pick up the touring cars shortly leading the way we have James Ram ahead of Tom Robinson as they complete the first lap is that a bit of smoke I see there from Michael Holt's car in the background number 11 here come your leaders the first three pulling away slightly meantime further back in the tour yes there is smoke from Michael Holt's car look at that he's in trouble he's going to have to pull over surely the 11 car with all sorts of problems as James Ram continues to lead the way already two minutes into this race eight to go looking back at the touring cars we can uh, see on our graphics it is uh, Mike Luck that has got the lead in that division in the BMW ahead of Simon Jeffs in the Golf, who has held second place. Stephen Primet in the Mark 1 Escort is in third position. Charles Coppock being chased by number 24, Michael Seaborn in the XJ40. Then we've got Derek Pierce, Lawrence Coppock, Rick Walker in the Battle of the Big Cats. Beautiful XJS out in front, James Ram many many times a winner over the years in this series he's a multiple champion in his class running in class D the uh, full race modified cars Robinson up the outside there into Abbey still in third place Tom Lenthal he leads class C Michael Seaborn in fourth now he's leading class B he's uh, made up into fourth place because we've lost uh, Michael Holtz. Ram sideways there coming through the uh, farm complex. One car we lost at the start of this race was Phil Waller incidentally. The Hillman Avenger didn't get away at the uh, second time of asking. side and trying to go around the outside there Tom Robinson I don't think he's going to make it around the outside at Stowe all the hopes of Swallows Racing pinned on that car now because uh, of course Matthew Davis's car caught fire he's having a look there as they go up towards Vale and he's round the outside he's late on the brakes he's done it round the outside into Vale superb piece of driving by Tom Robinson that's a move you don't see very often on the brakes round the outside into Vale he got the better exit from Stowe Corner and now he's ahead 
of James Ram. That's a brilliant piece of driving by Tom Robinson in the number four. Lenthal looking on in third place. Then the rest well behind. Five and a half minutes of this race to go. It's still Robinson from James Ram. Try and pick up our pre-83 Shell Oils touring car shortly. I can tell you the lead has changed in that division. Simon Jeffs has taken the lead in the Golf. Just coming through Abbey now. It's Tom Robinson who leads the way overall. Pre-83 Class C is led by Simon Jeffs. A by David Howard. Well, the big cats battling at the front overall. Coming up to lap the alpha suit of Keith Evans here. And oh, Tom Robinson had to lock up there to avoid the back of the back marker. He met him at the worst possible place. And this is going to give James Ram the chance and the momentum he leads to try and retake the lead of this race. Is he going to try and zap him on the run down to Abbey? Tom Robinson moves to defend. Over the line they go. And nose to tail. Two tenths of a second in it as they cross the line. Up towards Abbey and the... Uh, XJR of number four, Tom Robinson, holds his lead ahead of James Ram. Now well clear of Tom Lenthal, who's nearly five seconds back in that third place. Leading the touring car split, I can tell you, is Mike Luck. Leading, no, Simon Jeff, sorry, leading the uh, touring car split ahead of Mike Luck. Third in that division is David Howard in a Jaguar, but running with the pre-83s. Here they are, coming down the straight. Now there's David Howard, third in the touring car division. They're starting to overlap with some of the Jags now. Simon Lewis in the Series 1 XJ number 65 in the middle there. Tom Burgess in the Fiesta around the outside. Stephen Primmett coming through on the inside. It's unusual to see Primmett mired in a midfield battle. He's normally out in front fighting for the lead of the Shell Oils pre-83 touring cars. There is the leader, Simon Jeffs, ahead of Mike Luck. They've got ahead of Daniel Stewart's XJS and Mark Lucock up into third in the touring car split in the bright blue at Mark 1 Escorts. There is the man who's in ninth overall but leading his championship splits for the Shell Oils pre-83 touring cars. The beautiful Mark 1 Golf of Simon Jeffs from Mike Luck. It's still Tom Robinson who's got the overall lead. David Howard really working the tyres and brakes on his big XJ12. Cholerton. We spoke to him uh, in the pits earlier on today. The man from Norfolk. Number 97 there. That's uh, another of the Jags. Lawrence Coppock battling away, trying to lap Keith Evans in that Alpha Sud. It's done the three minutes of this race still to go. Robinson leads the Jags. Jeffs leads the Touring Cups. Tricky to follow this one with the uh, two races split into further subclasses. There goes the Akai Golf. Chased by the reigning champion, Mike Luck, in his E21 BMW. Coming up on the, some of the quicker Jags now. They're closing on Rick Walker in his XJS in eighth overall. Who's third in the touring cars? Looking back, it's uh, David Howard in the XJ12. There he is in the background, Mark Lucock running wide over the grass there almost. He's got Jonathan Corker behind him, who was having a corker of a race in that little Datsun 510. Then Tom Burgess, who dropped back a bit now in the Mark 1 Fiesta. Still, Tom Robinson leads overall by just under half a second from James Ram. They're well clear of their opposition now. Smoke from Simon Lewis. That's not tyre smoke, that's engine smoke. Another Jaguar in trouble. There's Derek Pierce. We've got problems there on the main straight. A car being pushed away. That's Bradley Bosdead, I think, the Mark II Escort that's uh, had a problem. He's out of the race. Simon Jeffs comes up onto the back of the green XJS there of Rick Walker. Mike Luck in second place, the ex-Clubman's sports car racer won the title last year in that orange BMW in the pre-83 division. They're lapping Gary Fletcher. There's what looks like the Coppock family at war. Charles ahead of Lawrence in their familiar white XJS. He's been racing those for many, many years. 
Mike Luck, a bit of a lock up there. Runs wide coming through Beckett's. Less than a minute to go now. This uh, rather shortened race, shortened by five minutes due to a red flag. Simon Dunford gets past Keith Evans in the Alpha Sud. Here's Tom Lenthal, our third place man, lapping the uh, Mark Bevington Toyota Celica. The early Celica GT, rare car that one. Should be check and flag this time through. It's looking good for Tom Robinson, who's pulled out a lead of one and a half seconds or so now over James Ram. Simon Jeffs continues to lead the touring cars in the Golf. The Golf's especially suited to Silverstone. They went well here last year. Almost at the end of the race now. Looks like it's going to be a win for Tom Robinson in the overall classification. Simon Jeffs in the touring cars. Well, the big cats, as expected, dominated at the front, but the touring cars were quickly closing up on him. The clock has counted down to zero, so we should see chequered flag this time. And there is the chequered flag, and there is Tom Robinson. Takes the win in car number four, second for James Ram in car number one, and they're way ahead of the rest, separated by just under one second at the flag. Tom Robinson also winning class D for the full race modified Jaguars. Still battling going on further back down the order. Mark Lukock chasing David Howard for third in the touring cars. Third overall has gone to Tom Lenthal in number seven. Nearly 18 seconds down on the race winner. Seaborn fourth, Derek Pierce fifth. They had a good battle in the closing stages. The Coppock sixth and seventh. And Simon Jeffs wins the Shell Oils pre-83 touring cars. There he is. Mike Luck in ninth place overall, second of the touring cars. Rick Walker rounds out the top ten. And this is Mark Lukock who takes third in the touring car category. In terms of class winners, the Jaguars, class D went to Tom Robinson, the overall winner, class C to Tom Lenthal, class B to Michael Seaborn. And in the Jags, class A went to Simon Dunford. Touring cars, pre-83, Class C and overall went to Simon Jeffs. Class A to David Howard in the Jag. Class D to Tom Burgess in the Fiesta. Class E to Ray Kirschberg in his Metro. No finishers in Class B, unfortunately. So well done Tom Robinson, good battle there and a great move around the outside into the Vale to take the lead from uh, James Ram. Simon Jeffs having a good strap with Mike Luck for the win in the Shell Oils pre-83 tour. coming into Park Ferme, there's uh, Tom Lenthal, Jaguar Land Rover Specialist. Michael Seaboard in the uh, beautiful uh, Castrol livery car, paint scheme made famous by the IMSA GTP Jaguars of the early 90s. Uh, hey, is it possible? Notice both of our uh, category winners, pre 83 touring cars and the Jaguars, won by car number four. I wonder what the odds on that would have been.
Next up, it is uh, going to be our first Brick Car Endurance Championship race of the day. We have got the starting drivers for it. Thank you to Stephen Wood. A little bit of clearing up needed after that one. A couple of touring cars to be uh, retrieved. I'll give you the results in a, a few moments' time. the result confirmed then it is uh, Tom Robinson who takes the victory ahead of James Ram number clash meaning a bit of an issue with the results there apologies for that third for Tom Lenthal ahead of Michael Seaborn Derek Pierce and the Coppock Simon Jeffs the touring car winner ahead of Mike Luck then Rick Walker Mark Lucock in the escorts David Howard's Jaguar XJ12 Stephen Primet Tom Burgess and Mark Cholerton next home completing the top 15 OK, let's head down here from Steve Jameson. He's down in Park Fermi. How, how do you feel after that? Fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Um, you could see it was going to be tight at the start because there were a lot of people in the 120s and um, a lot of really interesting cars as well. So i um, really looking forward to it. So I was really pleased with that. So finally, the Golf is coming on song. It's taken a long time to develop. The guys at JMR have done a great job and, um, yeah, very pleased with that. It feels like everything at this meet has taken its time to get there for so many different reasons. How nice is it to be back out there racing? Yeah, really nice. It's been, um, it's been a long wait, um, but um, really pleased that the country's emerging and um, astounded by the, by the government's vaccine programme. Really pleased with that. So full marks to them. I think they get such a hammering, but uh, they've done a great job. And how nice is it, personally, just to be back, back in and amongst the racing, back in and amongst your friends here on the classic touring cars? It, it seems to be everyone's really enjoying themselves this weekend so it's, far. It's really nice. Loads of people have come out and entered their cars, and they spend a lot of money and time getting them ready. And um, there's some really interesting cars now. There's a Datsun, there's a Toyota. Um, we've got um, a Fiesta out with us. So, um, yeah, the more the merrier. It's really good. Well, congratulations on a great race. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much.